And while we still do transplants, really we understand that it's not a viable alternative in the vast majority of patients as well who relapse. So if you take of 100 patients and if we cure 60 of them, that means 40 relapse. And of those 40, only about half of them, let's say 20 then, actually end up getting a transplant. And why do they not get a transplant? Well, it's either because they're not sensitive to chemotherapy, and if you're not sensitive to chemotherapy, there's really not a reason to be moving into a transplant, or they may have comorbidities or other issues that don't allow them to get a transplant. So only about half of patients are getting the transplant. So now out of those 100, we're at 20 patients, and we cure about 50% of the patients who get a transplant, and that's only about 10 of those 100 patients. So that's, of course, important, but that means that of those 100 patients, 60 are cured up front, maybe 10 are cured with a transplant, and that leaves 30 of those 100 who are still needing uh, significant, obvious treatment options that could provide them significant benefit. And we know now that we have some newer agents that are very, very important for relapse patients. The biggest one to know about, of course, are CAR T cell therapies or cellular therapies. And CAR T cells are important in that they provide an opportunity still for cure for people who have either failed a transplant or perhaps never even were able to get to the transplant because again, maybe they aren't chemosensitive or they may have even been very high risk with and be refractory to upfront our CHOP chemoimmunotherapy. CAR T cell treatments are very important for those types of patients. And we know that it appears that the CAR T cells can provide long-term survival of those patients who get that procedure up to about maybe half of those patients.